Good morning. I'm doing a recipe by request today. A couple of years back, our garden was just producing a bumper crop of jalapeno peppers. And we liked jalapeno jelly, so I was making jelly. And then the pears started getting ripe. And we had a bumper crop of pears from one pear tree. I was making pear preserves. And then one day it just dawned on me, I wonder what it would be like if I made a jalapeno pear jelly. So I did a batch of it and it was great. We started uh, giving it to our friends. And once I started making YouTubes, one of my friends suggested, well, Berta, why don't you, why don't you do the pepper jelly on YouTube? So I thought, Oh, she must be out of jelly. <laughs> this was on Facebook, and so I wrote her back, and I said, sounds like I need to do it and uh, bring you a jar. So that's what I'm going to do today, is show you the jalapeno pear jelly quick method. What do I mean by the quick method? Fine jelly makers pride themselves in is how clear and pretty their jelly is. And if you ever go to a 4-H meeting or something like that and where you are doing something where you're supposed to be judged, they look at the clarity of that jelly. And that that takes boiling down your, uh, your vegetables, fruits, vegetables, and uh, straining out that liquid and then making the gel. But in jalapeno pepper, in jalapeno pepper and pear jelly, I don't mind having bits and pieces of pears or bits and pieces of peppers. In fact, I think that's pretty is when you look up and see all those little flecks in there. So that's what we're, that's what I'm calling the quick method. We don't have to strain it for hours and we're just going to go with it. So the first thing we have is four cups of of vegetables. You do this to your taste. Some people can only uh, stand a little bit of heat and others want a lot of heat. So you need four cups. What I have done is I have one cup of jalapenos, one cup of bell peppers, and two cups of pears. But do this to your taste as long as it adds up to four cups. Then this is this is a granny bee, a hint. I squeeze a lemon into mine and then I actually add the whole lemon into my mix while it's boiling because there's a lot of pectin in lemon, the pulp of lemon, and especially the rind of the lemon. And so anything that you can do to bump up the pectin level, that, that's what makes your gel. In this pan, I already have six cups of sugar. Here I have one and a half cups of cider vinegar and we're going to start melting that sugar. Now I've squeezed the juice out and and I've checked for seeds and there's no seeds so I'm just going to drop that whole thing in there. There's the other half of the lemon. I'm going to add the peppers and the pears now. And here I have half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I'm going to go ahead and add it now. So everything is in the pan except the surdo. We add the surdo later. Okay, what we're going to do now that we've got everything in the pan is we're just going to bring this to a boil. When it comes to a boil, then we'll add two pouches of Serto. I've already got them cut open so I can be fast. <laughs> and I stood them up in these cups so of course they don't spill over. So this is going to take a little while. We'll be back as soon as it comes to a boil. In the meantime, I do have my jars over here. These jars have come out of the dishwasher. Make sh you have to make very sure that your jars are scrupulously clean and you check check the rims. You have to check the rims to make sure that there's no nicks or cuts or leftover rubber from the last time you used your jars. 
because you can reuse your jars over and over. So just check the rims and the rings are in here. Here's the rings. They're down in the water. What we want to do is put this on, put this burner on, and we're going to let, let that come to a simmer. And then what happens is, as that starts simmering, the uh, steam will come up and further sanitize these jars. And here I have the, the flats, the brand new flats, and they need to be hot too. Them being hot starts the softening process of the, the rubber. And so then when you pour your jelly into your jars, that rubber is already partially warm and it helps make a good seal. Plus, of course, being in the water, bringing it to a simmer is going to disinfect it. So when you do, when you do canning, you have to be very clean all the time. That's why I have two towels right here handy. But we'll be back once this concoction gets to boiling. Okay, we are at a complete rolling boil now. So I'm going to add the Serto. Continue to let it boil until it gets thick. It's just falling off of the spoon real fast. What we're looking for is for it to start threading. And here's a thread and here's a thread. Trying to make two threads there. What you're looking for is when this comes together and makes one thread and it's real thick. So that's going to take about 20 minutes. There's two strings. It, it's wanting to come together. I'm not going to get a, it doesn't look like I'm going to get a good, there, two strings coming right now, but they did come together. I don't know if you saw that or not. Let's look again. There was a string here and a st string here, but it's coming together. We're consistently getting two strings now. There they came together. Did you see them? There they go. Two of them came together. And it's dropping really slow. We're going to call this done. Look how long that one's hanging. It's getting thicker and thicker. So we're going to take out this lemon now. Squeeze it as much as I can. We want to get all of that good out of there. Now, once that lemon peel cools, I'm going to I'm going to cut it into thin shreds and I'll add that to something like carrots, steamed carrots. That'll be really good. Now, see how these jars have gotten all steamy? As a matter of fact, I'm not going to be able to touch them. Normally at this point, you would skim the foam off of the jelly but because the the vegetables are still in here there's not that much foam the it's like the the vegetables break up that foam but if you if you're just cooking plain jelly you just put your spoon in there and skim it off and drop it in a bowl but I want you to see this up close It looks thin right now, but as it cools, it will gel. I'm going to start with the biggest jar first. Most canning books tell you to fill it to within a half inch of the top and that's roughly right here where this little lip is. 
I'm going to put just a little bit more in. There you go. And here we are, we're down to the last jar. I'm having to tip my pan over now to get a ladle full. Okay, there we go. We do have a little bit left, which I I always have a bowl, just in case. Because this can't be precise, because you never know how much evaporation is going to take place while you're boiling everything down. I use the Ball Blue Book of Canning for my basic recipes and if you stick with what they have then you're pretty much guaranteed that uh, your your canning is going to come come out all right and they've got some good recipes in here in fact my husband loves ketchup and uh, one of the videos that I'm going to do real quick is how to make your own homemade ketchup and the reason why you would want to do that is because, once again, when you look at the ingredients on something store-bought, you may not know what, what is in there. If you do know what is in there, you may not want it. When you can it at home, you know what you've got. So there we go. Had a little bit left over. Use it up first. And then we've got six jars that we can share or just gobble up as soon as we can. <laughs> and once again, I thank you. This, this has been Granny Bee's recipe. Take it and make it your own. You'll be glad you did. Everywhere I have taken this jelly, and one of the favorite things to do at a covered dish is to take a, a brick of cream cheese, pour a jar of this over, and put some Ritz crackers on the side. And people will just devour it and more than likely they'll come up to you and say I've got to have that recipe so now make it your own thank you